Hi everyone, this is Elisa with another step two question for you. Go ahead and do this question on your own, pause and then come back. I'm gonna get started. So a 32 year old woman comes to the physician because of a one year history of intermittent buzzing in her, both her ears. She says sometimes she has episodes of mild dizziness which revolve, resolve spontaneously. She has a past medical history of type one diabetes and a muscle sprain. She does not smoke or drink alcohol. Her current medications are aspirin and insulin. She works as a pianist for a symphony orchestra. Her vital sounds are within normal limits. On otoscopic exam, the tympanic membrane appears normal. Bone conduction is greater than air conduction in both ears. Weber test shows no lateralization. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? What is important in this vignette? She's really young, so the 32-year-old part is very important. She has one year of this problem. She also has mild dizziness, and she has type 1 diabetes and a muscle sprain, but what's important is that she takes aspirin. Um, she works as a pianist for a symphony orchestra, which might get a little loud. Uh, Vita sounds are normal, tympanic membranes are normal. This is the most important part of the vignette and it's the physical exam. So we have a Weber and a Rene test and uh, bone connection is greater than air connection in both ears. That's your Rene test and it's very important and very telling. Um, and the Weber test shows no lateralization. What does that tell us? Likely that both ears are affected. So with these in mind, our answer choices are presbycusis, otosclerosis, Meniere's, drug-induced ototoxicity, acoustic neuroma. Um, and these are all great options, so let's go through them. But first, let's remind ourselves, what is Weber and what is Renee? These are generally pretty difficult to remember, I find, for most students. Um, so a quick review is very helpful. So the Weber test is when you put the tuning fork on the top of the head and it tells you you know, um, is it one ear or is it both ears? And is it conductive? Uh, is it sensory neural? But you have to piece those parts with the Rene test. So um, I find that it's easier to start with the Rene test because a um, negative Rene test, and the names are a little confusing. So a negative Rene test which means bone conduction is greater than air conduction, indicates conductive hearing loss. So there's a problem before we get to the nerve. And in the case of unilateral conductive hearing loss, the Weber test lateralizes to the affected ear. So let's say this ear had a problem with conductive hearing loss. That means externally something is wrong before we get to the nerve. The brain makes it so um, you the Weber test will lateralize to the same ear. However, if the problem is sensory neural, the Weber test will lateralize to the opposite ear. So it's easier to start with Rene. Think is air. It's easier to understand air conduction and bone conduction, and then you look at Weber. So let's start with presbycusis. Most likely, it's a patient older than 50 years old, um, and they have sensory neural hearing loss. Uh, you'll have a positive Rene, and positive means normal, which is odd, but that's just the nomenclature. And you would, you would not have conductive hearing loss. So the answer is not presbycusis. She's young, and she has conductive hearing loss. The next option is otosclerosis. Now, otosclerosis is something that's more common um, than you think. It's also the most likely diagnosis in a patient between age 20 and 40 who presents with tinnitus and bilateral conductive hearing loss. They might also complain of vertigo, but that's not necessarily in all of the patients, so don't look at it in, don't look for it in a question. Uh, necessarily to be your end all be all. Now, little fun facts uh, kind of to impress during the wards, not necessarily will be tested on your boards, but patients with otosclerosis might hear better in noisy uh, than quiet surroundings, which is called paracusis of Willis. And then another fact is you can see a reddish hue through the tympanic membrane, it's called the Schwartzy sign. So this sounds like a pretty good option, doesn't it? 
Let's see what the others are. So Meniere disease, that's another thing that you might see quite often on your exams. And it's a classic triad of vertigo, hearing loss, and tinnitus. So Meniere disease is basically caused by endolymphatic pressure um, and you know, increased fluid in the ear cavity, which causes the triad of these symptoms. Um, the vertigo is extraordinarily severe and it's accompanied by nausea and vomiting quite often. However, the hearing loss, interestingly enough, is very episodic and only happens during these attacks of dizziness um, and it goes away. And the other thing is it's bilateral. So same, you know, she also has bilateral um, hearing loss. So that's um, definitely not her case because she does not have severe nausea vomiting. Um, nor does she have vertigo. She just complains of mild dizziness and intermittent buzzing in both of her ears. So no vertigo, which is important for Meniere disease. The next one is drug-induced ototoxicity. So this patient is taking aspirin. Aspirin is classic for ototoxicity. So chronic aspirin use causes reversible tinnitus, vertigo, often described as dizziness, and hearing loss. So very similar to Meniere disease. However, uh, it presents with sensory neural hearing loss and not um, conductive hearing loss, and it's often bilateral. And then finally, we have acoustic neuroma, which is unilateral, that's important, sensory neural hearing loss. And um, same as Meniere, you have um, the air connection will be greater than bone conduction. Um, in the unaffected ear. So uh, these are our answers. So obviously the answer is otosclerosis. And we refer her to ENT. Thank you so much for doing this question.